Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about sensory overload in persons with a traumatic brain injury. Now of course we're all familiar with the senses, things like sight, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. And while ordinarily we think of those things like taste coming from the mouth or hearing coming from the ears, it's not really true. All of those senses start and stop with the brain. The brain processes information and then registers it as, hey, that tastes salty or that sounds loud. So when a person suffers a traumatic brain injury, all of those senses are affected in many ways and can result in what we call hypersensitivity. Things like um, an ordinary uh, song at a regular volume seems booming to them or uh, lights on in a room seems in seem incredibly bright. So <clears throat> understanding when a loved one complains about these things is very important and um, there are some ways you can help. Today we'll discuss six of those ways. First, it's very important to control the home environment. Uh, there's an old saying about the home is your sanctuary and no more is the, nowhere is this more true than when dealing with a loved one that has a traumatic brain injury. In this regard, things like making it a place of comfort and not confusion become of the utmost importance. Uh, the little things that we take for granted, like the volume of a stereo that's on or let's say a TV, can be very, very confusing and frustrating for a person with a traumatic brain injury. So in that area, I would suggest starting with a lower volume than you may ordinarily use and see how comfortable your loved one is. And if they also complain that it's not loud enough or too loud, then you can adjust the volume to make their surroundings more comfortable. We don't want them to be frightened or disoriented because of those sorts of startling sounds that suddenly come on. Light switches um, and turning lights on and off seem like an everyday occurrence to us, but light sensitivity is a major issue for persons with traumatic brain injuries. And you can buy dimmers for your light switches that are very inexpensive, and I would suggest you do that, especially for those lights that you use the most often or where there's, you know, say a lot of can lights or a lot of fluorescent lights definitely get something that can uh, dim that for your loved one because of the same hypersensitivity to light that many still uh, experience. Be careful, and this would be step two, be careful when you go into public places. Crowds and noise and claustrophobia that, you know, things we don't really think about on a daily basis can have a really deleterious effect on a loved one with a traumatic brain injury. And things like concerts and shopping malls and large restaurants can really be a problem for these folks. Now I understand that sometimes it's going to be absolutely necessary to go to one of those places. So when that is necessary, I would suggest that you go for only a short amount of time and be prepared for your loved one to bring earplugs or sunglasses. That's a very inexpensive and reasonable way of helping them deal with their surroundings. The third step would be that when you are engaged in a conversation with more than just your loved one, if there's several people in a room, it may be a good idea to speak with those people uh, in privacy uh, or in a private setting and away from your loved one and explain that it's important to speak slowly and at a low tone and that one person speak at a time. This will avoid the confusion and frustration of a loved one that's dealing with a traumatic brain injury. Number four, brain injuries are usually accompanied by pain because of a physical injury, stress because of their surrounding and circumstances, and fatigue because of their inability to get a good night's sleep. So it's important to try to reduce these levels as much as possible so that they are not components that intensify the effects of the hypersensitivity. Step five, avoid caffeine and alcohol for the same reasons. These are stimulants that can only increase hypersensitivity for your loved one with a traumatic brain injury. And finally, number six, monitor their diet. 
I would suggest foods rich in vitamin A that can help tremendously, but I wouldn't overdo it. I hope these six steps help you to, that, to uh, assist your loved one with a traumatic brain injury, reacclimate to their surroundings, and have the best possible life moving forward in an otherwise chaotic world. Thank you.